Are you looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this football and basketball season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections for a wide variety of stats, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and injury insurance on your picks are what makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million players who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash bluewire and use code bluewire. That's code bluewire at prizepicks.com slash bluewire for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Support for this podcast comes from Frito-Lay in the 2023 Snack Bracket Championship. The Frito-Lay Snack Challenge is underway, and fans are voting on their favorite snacks to crown champion. We're talking about primetime matchups between the best 64 snacks in the land. Will Ruffles Ridges reign supreme? Can Doritos defend their dynasty? Or will Smart Food use their smarts for a surprise upset? Only you can decide. Get in on all the action for a chance to win up to $1,000 or a year's worth of snacks. Let your snacks be heard. Just go to frito to vote and enter for a chance to win. No purchase necessary. Three of ends April 3rd, 2023. Void but prohibited. Years worth of snacks awarded in the form of 52 coupons, each good for one bag of chips. See official rules at frito Hey, everybody. It's Kirk Henderson. Welcome to Radio Free Mavericks, part of the Dallas or part of the Mavs Moneyball podcast group. We are coming to you on Wednesday night. It's September 1st, uh, which means we're less than a month out from training camp, if you want to believe that madness. Uh, I'm coming to you the night after I wrote a post for MadsMoneyBall.com where I explained why we're not posting very much. And of course, I can't help myself. Um, And here I am uh, doing something basketball related anyways, even though there's not a ton going on. Uh, and I wanted to uh, just talk to you guys. So uh, why don't you, you know, bring up any questions or thoughts? I, I kind of wanted to talk about the Mavericks coaching staff because um, kind of despite my own uh, tendencies to bitch about everything, um, I like the group they've put together. Uh, for those who are kind of, uh, on a, you know, not really up on the, the specifics, uh, they've hired Suns coach I- Igor Ko- Kokosov, man, I'm going to have to get a Slovenian to teach me how to say these things. Uh, Sean Sweetney, who has been with Kid before. Jared Dudley also joins the staff. And as much as I personally do not care for Dudley, I find him to be annoying. Uh, Players seem to really like him, so I think that's really interesting. Um, And also Lakers people, including LeBron James, were, I don't know, annoyed that the Lakers didn't keep him. Uh, Greg St. St. Jean, I think as I say his name. Uh, he was also uh, an advanced scout and developmental coach out in L.A., um, current WNBA player uh, and former Washington Wizards coach Christy Tolliver joins the Mavericks coaching staff, um, incredibly decorated NBA playing career. I know a lot of people may not know who she is because you don't follow the, the the WNBA that closely, but I think she's a really interesting hire. Um, Daryl Armstrong, Peter Patton, and God Sham God return which is uh, having God Sham God is extremely important as half the Mavericks can't dribble. I'm um, really looking forward to, to seeing what this coaching staff does. I think that Luca, you know, could use some fresh voices in the room. And that is something I am looking forward to seeing the results of. Um, even if I may not be a fan of Jason Kidd as a coach, I think that the, the kind of group around him uh, is at least particularly interesting. Um so, uh, as always, if you guys have questions or thoughts or concerns, let's go up here and talk about it for a little bit uh, and then get out of here. I was really just testing to see if the functionality works, but uh, it seems that it does because now we have people in the room, whereas last time I did one of these, we had like 15 people, which was not uh, not all that normal for me. Um, let's see here. <laughs> Brandon, Brandon asks in the chat, Kirk, who will win the NBA arms race for centers, us or Cleveland? You know? Um, I really thought that uh, I really thought that the Mavericks had this market covered, and the Cavaliers have taken a definitive lead, in my opinion, because it's not only do they have centers, they have like name recognition centers. 
uh, when you get like tackle fall and some of these guys, like that's pretty, that that's pretty in, in, impressive to me. Um, it, it's, they just have all these guys. And it was so funny because before the Kevin love, like, I don't know, non buyout, like whatever discussion circled around Kevin love for like a day and a half on social media, I had forgotten that he was even on the Cavs. So it's like, if you consider the fact that they have spent a uh, hundred million on, um, Gosh, what's the guy's name? The guy that got over from the Nets, Jared Allen, who's, I mean, I think he's good. 100 million on him, 67 million on Laurie Markkinen. And then they drafted Mobley, who is probably like a lot of folks seem to think he's a generational type big man, you know, Chris Boshy in, in a way. Uh, and, and you're just paying all these big guys in an area, in a, in a game when, um, in a game and age when it's just like there's not, like, big guys don't play. Like, in, you have one big guy on the floor. It just doesn't make any sense. Okay, uh, my man Leo has asked a question. Leo, what's going on? Hi, how's everyone? I'm okay. Thanks for joining us. You never, half the time you're not able to talk, and you, you send me DM questions, which I don't see till the end of the pod. But uh, what, what you got for us today? Uh, I was wondering, what do you think is, like, our weakest uh, group of, well, position right now? Because I was really hoping they would get a chance to get Larry Nance because I'm really afraid of them driving Dorian and Maxie into the ground again. Like, Me too. Um, this is a fun question because I think big picture the answer is wing because the Mavericks just don't have a ton of wing depth. They don't have anybody that can actually guard like the superior wings in the league. Like it's, it's not Maxie. It's not Dorian Finney-Smith. Like it just doesn't work. We have – we have uh, answers uh, to date on that. Um, but I will say that that I do think that Nance is – it makes sense why we coveted him um, as a player, as a concept, because Larry Nance is what the Mavericks think Dwight Powell is, where he can do all sort. he can shoot, he can dribble, he can pass, he can defend – a ton of his shots in Cleveland were dunks, just like like uh, uh, Dwight Powell. Only he does a little bit of everything. Now, the real question for me, the real question for me is, uh, do you with him is do you think it's worth giving up a first round pick to get him? And considering the Mavericks still owe the twenty twenty three draft pick to the to the Knicks, I don't think that was something they were ever going to be able to be in on. Um, the trailblazers have sort of exhausted all of their picks to go get guys, um, that are just not quite good enough to play, you know, while giving up, uh, picks to, to go get these guys. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm typing as, as we're, as we're, um, babbling here and, or as I'm babbling here, because I want to go look at their roster real quick. They gave up a first round pick. Maybe did they give up two first round picks to go get Bob Covington? Uh, See so that like so you're talking three first round picks to go get Larry Nance and Bob Covington. That is wild when you say that out loud. Like we would in the moment when you're like okay, this is going to patch this hole on this team, the idea is uh okay, I get it. I can get why we do that. But does it actually make, like does the addition of Larry Nance take them from being a team that can beat the Nuggets in the first round? Would it take the Mavericks to a team that could beat the Clippers in the first round? I, I, I just, I don't know. Uh, Zach in the chat notes, if Dallas did that, the Mavericks would have made the finals this year. <sighs> I mean, maybe. I, I, I get why we would feel that way because Luka is that much of a floor raiser. But it, it's just, it's very difficult for me um, to kind of envision that because the teams that they run into – in the way that the Mavericks play, there's there. I don't want to call them predictable, but good defenses are going to gear down and stop them. I mean, I, I think if the Mavericks played anybody else in the first round this year, a lot of the hubbub that's experienced over the last four months is not something we would have focused in on. Um, uh, we have one one guy in the chat that that notes that we need a, a power forward, and and I think that just kind of the the bigger thoughts are we need more to me, we need more defenders. If that makes sense. Like Jason Kidd, when, and during his, uh, during like one of the introductory press conferences talked about how he wants to make this a defensive team. And I don't understand how you can make a defensive team when you don't have defensive players. Like we all like Maxi and Dorian for the effort that they give, 
but they're your second line of defense, not your first line of defense. If you're a good team and there's just nothing that it's, it's just one of these frustrating things that tends to continue to exist because the Mavericks haven't been able to improve in that area. Now, I, I suppose there's an argument for, for uh, Reggie Bullock adding his defensive chops um, to the mix is going to help push people into less responsible uh, into roles that aren't as important where they can mix things up a little bit, but I just don't know. It's going to be, it, it's, it's worth talking about Leo. I, I rambled on into your question for a while, but does, does that kind of answer it or, or did I not get, get specific enough? Oh, it answers perfectly. I just would want to temperament fans uh, expectations for KP's defense or the team's defense next year. Cause the way our defense is set up as it's been played so far is the fact we're pretty much like, uh, we're pretty much like the Jazz, but worse, because everything always gets funneled into KP, right. and, he and can't move. KP can't stop them. It's like, yeah, and it's oh, it's all KP's fault. But if you it's don't not. have defenders that can stay in front of him, it's really so much someone can do. And yeah. uh, just for a last thing that I really would like to hear you and X's thoughts on, what is a player you guys would be okay spending a first round uh, pick on, or trading an uh, ample amount of players on, based on the Mavericks' current situation with whatever. <sighs> Man, I've thought about this a lot, and I'm just so bad at assessing value. Um, let me just invite Xavier up on screen if he's still in here, and he can um, he can speak on this when he gets a second. But it's it's just so difficult for me because I'm not – when you look at what the Bulls did this year, part of me says, wow, the Bulls really went all in to go do something. And, and w- I know you didn't ask about, like, signing people, but it's basically playing all your cards is kind of the question that I'm, I'm getting at uh, that, that I'm going to – choose to answer here and I just don't know but I have more faith in Luca than I have in all but maybe four other players in the league and so if the opportunity presents itself they need they just have to do something I don't know what that something is it's not this is where I kind of get I get criticism for this because they'll say you know I, I was on Mark Stein's show a couple of weeks ago and he's like what would you do and the answer is I don't know because this is my job. I just know that like it can't you can't continually, you know. I'm, I was reading a a Kevin Pelton uh, article today where he's grading people and it says when the Mavericks were unable to land one of their top free agents of the market, they said Tim Hardaway Jr. was a reasonable Plan B. How many damn times are we going to hear reasonable Plan B before we demand more? Like, you know, I, we all most people in here I'm assuming have a job. If you screw up your job at a certain point, your boss tells you you suck at your job. And the problem is Mark Cuban is unaccountable because he's in charge of all this. So I don't know. I, I but Xavier, what are your thoughts on on Leo's question? Who would you really want to go big? Uh, honestly, Larry Nance was my number one target. Other than that, Thad Young. Ooh. I would trade a round pick for Thad Young. I think if we can put him at the four, he can even play some small ball five in some lineups. He brings defense. He brings rebounding, and he shoots just well enough to not cramp our spacing. So this, you're going to hit that young name a lot in trade discussions because they're going to be a, a, a bunch of contenders lining up to try and get his services. And, you know, he's going to be worth a first-round pick. Um, so definitely that young. Honestly, before he got traded to the Nuggets, I would have wanted Aaron Gordon. He would have fit perfectly um, with us. Expensive, though. I mean, yeah. the, the, the going rate for these guys where it's like, that if you make a choice on one of these dudes, that's your team until Luca gets pissed and demands a trade. Yeah. Um, other than that, I mean, honestly, I would see what Oklahoma City would want for somebody like Kenrich Williams, which is not a name that you hear a lot about, but he's somebody that can fit into a lot of different lineups. So I definitely would like somebody like him. Other than that, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm looking through the team, just trying to remember Ross's. Well, I want to address something while you look here, because Kenny, our man Kenny, just makes a very salient point in the chat. He says, Thad Young's about to be 34. Y'all would go insane. I think he's right, but it's mainly a question of we have, like, I want the Mavericks to change pieces out every year. If shit doesn't work, move them along. And and part of, like, my mass frustration has been they, they will roll out the same group of guys that were on the team in February 2019 with the exception of like two or three pieces that have been moved in and out over that period, it's going to be the same core eight guys like that. And that, you know, that's just what's, li- if, if they could bring in, they say, I just, I mean, maybe right. Maybe Reggie Bullock will work. Maybe. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm to the point now where I've talked myself into the maps being like a four seed, just because I think they're going to yeah. be such a bear to play in the regular season. 
Oh, they're going to be. A, I, honestly, if we stay healthy, we should be a force. And look, um, to Kenny's point, look, at the end of the day, fans got to decide what we want. We don't have the assets to go get the young up and coming piece that fits like a glove. We're not going to be able to draft them. We don't have cap space to sign them and we don't have the trade assets to trade for them. So what we need to do is trade for those type of guys who are on the wrong side of 30, but for a year or two can come in and help elevate the ceil- help raise the team's ceiling. There is no perfect solution out there that is easily attainable for us. So we're going to have to go get a dad young. You know what I'm saying? And we're going to have yeah. to go get players like that because that's the only thing we can afford to get right now. So all these players that are pipe dreams, look, they're just that. They're pipe dreams. And look, Whoa! Internet cut out for you. There you oh, go. Oh man, sorry. That's all right. I just, I just don't see the young player that that would fit Lucas' timeline. And look, based on all the reactions from fans, um, we want to win now, right? We we don't mm-hmm. want to take the staircase. We want to take the escalator. So, all right. Well, that was fun, Leo. What do you think? Uh, Thaddeus Young is actually really high on my list. But I uh, just sitting here thinking also. I mean, how realistic is it the Mavs might be a third or fourth team in some of these, like, major league-changing uh, trades, maybe a Ben Simmons trade or a Bradley Beal trade if they ever do happen? I mean, if it's true that Rich Paul doesn't want any of his agents in uh, in Philly, maybe we can give up a first in green for maybe Tyrese Maxey. I might be a little higher on him than most people. Or if the Kings are, cha- are going to end up trading any of their players, maybe we can try and get Hall- Hear me out. The Mavericks could have... Drafted Tyrese Maxey. Oh, I know. I, it's, <laughs> it's essential pay. It's essential pay. Oh, I know. No, I know what you mean. It's 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 tough. Um, and we did try to I, trade up for Halliburton. By the way, they did. I yeah. saw that too. Yeah, the Kings were pretty. Tim Tim Cato says the Kings were pretty locked in on that one. But I mean, at least it like you no, know, they 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 had like the right idea in mind for the first time in what feels like forever past before like Luca being drafted. I don't know. I mean, I think that there's some – sometimes I think we, we kind of underrate Luca and KP because they don't seem to love playing together, but the fact of the matter is is that they're really fucking good. Um, I saw some some folks in the chat wondering, you know, why 3-4? And, I mean, I'm Oscar the Grouch when it comes to, like, Mavs positivity. And when I looked at – like, when you do kind of an examination of their schedule, the fact that they play – they play the few they they're they're one of the group that play the fewest back to backs in the league, which I think is important for them. And I also want to factor in that if they're playing eighty two games over a normal schedule, that means we're going to get a regular health plan for Porzingis. He was not a like I crushed the guy. It, it's it it was like you know my 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 interests online were talking trash about KP and screaming during Mavs games. Like that was what I did for a year. But I, I want to at least be a little bit of an optimist and say if they're not going to move him, then if he's able to play at a regular NBA pace where they're not playing four and a half games in five nights, which is basically what happened last year. They were playing like they played something like in thirty they they played thirty plus games in sixty days last year, which is not normal for what the league wants. And if the Mavericks can get a little health in Obviously, health is going to be a factor here. But if they can get you know sixty games out of Porzingis, I, I'm pretty bullish about what this team could do because I also think Luca comes back pretty pissed off. I think he's tired of playing the Clippers. I also hope that if the Mavericks end up with Goran Dragic, then Dragic can you know tell him to shape up on those nights where he looks like he's had a little bit too much sauce out on the town, and they can go crush teams early. Because remember, guys, they won sixty six percent of their games. Um, Pat, at a certain point, I can't remember exactly when it was, but they won a ton of games down the stretch while also losing to the Kings three times to the, the Grizzlies on a bat. Like th- I just, when this team is on fire, they're just going to be a monster to play in the regular season. And that's kind of where my head is at the moment. I don't know if that makes them a good playoff team. I just think that like on a night in night out basis, they're going to be, they're going to be a bitch to defend. Um, and that, that will, that is unless, you know, Jason Kidd doesn't do something insane. And Kirk, one more player, Eric Gordon. We oh. know we know the Rockets are dying to get rid of Daniel House. So if we could find like I don't have the trade machine in front of me, but if we can get the contracts Powell plus whatever to get Eric Gordon and Daniel House from them, I think we can get them for cheap just because the Rockets would love to move off of that money. Now, if you look at his contract, it says three years. But the 30 is only guaranteed if he wins the finals in one of the prior two seasons. Now, look, 
if we win the championship with Eric Gordon, pay the man the third year. But if we don't win the championship with him, then it's only a two-year contract. Honestly, that's more than worth it. I would yeah. take Gordon House off the Rockets, and it would probably only take matching salary and maybe a couple seconds because, like I said, they're just looking to get off the contract. Well, and this is where the rest of us are going to have to catch up to you and um, the General Scott, the guy who runs CBA Mavs Draft, and – Know that before free agency even starts next year, the Mavericks are like there, there is no cap room. So, like, we're kind of operating from a point now to where money spent is money spent. It's not the Mavericks' problem. They're not going to be able to do very much other than like limited moves. So, at that point, it becomes about trades, right? No, precisely. The only thing we'll have, and look, it's entirely possible that we start next year, next offseason over the tax based on whatever if we give Jalen Brunson a contract extension. And if that's the case, where won't we won't even have the full mid level exemption. We'll have the taxpayers mid level, which is about five and a half, six million mm. close to the nine point eight that a non tax paying team would pay. And that's gonna be our biggest vehicle to taking a player. That and the 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 exception, the trade exception that we have. That expires at some point next off season. So we'll have the five point six and we'll have the value of the of the traded player exception. And those will be the two vehicles for us to bring down the next off. But the traded player exception I and I'm gonna I'm gonna ha- I don't mean to be like the negative Nancy on this. I feel as if traded player exceptions often go go away more frequently than they are used, or am I incorrect? So they they go away if that team is going to have cap space because you have to renounce it in order to take advantage of cap space. Oh, so there's, oh. the Mavericks have an interest in, in filling exactly. that then. Okay. Exactly. That's going to be more money that we can offer anybody in free agency. So we will want to take advantage of that as opposed to if we choose a traded player exception versus 20 million cap space. No, we're going to renounce the 11 million and use a 20 million cap space. So for us, Trust me, if we don't use that, then that's a fair that's an organizational failure. We have to use that if we want to get better. So we just we just need we just need to ask Scott, uh Mav I think CBA Mavs to to build out a list of everyone who makes nine point eight million or less in the league. <laughs> and like start <laughs> literally go to NBA.com tomorrow and just sort players by salary and then just copy and paste a list into like Twitter or something or screenshot it and you know, we'll be able to see who we can bring in with that. But but yeah. Interesting. yeah. Things get interesting. Well, you got anything else? Thank you for joining us up. No, here. not a problem. Thank you for bringing me up. Hopefully, I wasn't too boring for the people. No, everybody. Everybody loves Xavier. We we got to get the the Xavier and Kenny show is going to happen one day, and it's going to be fireworks. And Kenny. maybe I'll maybe I'll Kurt. just bring you guys up and, and get off stage at some point. Kenny has been ducking the smoke for. Oh weeks. no, Ken, no, no. He wants no. no part of it. Kenny's been moving. He's like me. He he's like me, where he's been. You know, he he he's been uh, moving across town. And anybody, any any adult that that can move can can that has moved can can tell you that. And you know this, obviously. Moving is the worst life experience that has nothing to do with like death and illness. Like it is fucking terrible. No. I never want to. I I don't. I love my house, but I also don't love my house. But I never want to move again. Kenny, Kenny shut me down because he said he had to go to Home Depot and shop for wallpaper. And I said, look, we're grown. I get it. But, you know, I thought he wanted to argue. He doesn't want to argue, you know. You Maybe can't... Bed Bath & Beyond. He didn't know if he'll have time. <laughs> he didn't have um... enough time. All right. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> be good, Xavier. Talk yeah. to you later. All right. Uh, coming up next, we have Christian. I haven't talked to you in forever. How you doing, buddy? Oh, I'm doing good. Yeah, got sent on assignment for the next year in Chicago. So uh, wow. getting, getting used to this central time. Like, I had it great being on the West Coast. Like, everything, you know, late game started at 7 and mm-hmm. all that. So not looking forward to that piece. So you're going to be really confused when you're up with us in the middle of the night, like I was doing for uh, for post game things. Yeah, that's what usually I'd hop on this at like six thirty, you know, my time, or you know, even late. You guys were talking like it's one in the morning. I'm like, oh man, it's you know ten o'clock here. I'm fine. But uh, uh, so to be honest, it's kind of piggybacking off the first speaker. I was rather adamant that I didn't want to trade any of our first round picks unless we were packaging uh, what we have. And obviously we'd kind of have to wait for the, the 2023 picks to convey uh, unless it was for a star. But the only player that I 
at least had in mind that I wanted to trade a first for was Larry Nance. And the reason for that is, you know, we're acutely aware of how hard it is to win a title. And when you win one, it doesn't matter, you know, injuries that took place. Like, you know, sometimes it's still talked about the Warriors losing to the Raptors, but ultimately, you know, the Raptor held up like, you know, winning that title, the hard work, the team, yada, yada. So I was wondering, because my thought was, you know, if our offseason was trading a first and, you know, someone, a cap filler for Larry Nance, and our offseason was Larry Nance, supposing we got Drogic and uh, Reggie Bullock. I mean, I feel like that team wins the West. And I, <laughs> I I really fully believe that we would win the West. I think that it would ultimately benefit KP as well because I think, you know, KP was, you know, had like cement blocks on his feet. But at the same time, if our perimeter defenders or if we just had better defenders, period, uh, he would at least be in better positions to make a play on the defensive end of the court. And I feel like if you add Reggie Bullock and uh, Larry Nance to that starting lineup, we actually have something to work with there. Do, mm-hmm. do you feel that we would win the West? Do you think that would be, and I know you talked partly about it in the last, uh, the last speaker, but do you feel that that would get us to the finals and at minimum have a shot? Uh, at the t- hmm, some of this is so colored by the fact that the Mavericks have played 13 playoff games all against Kawhi, Kawhi Leonard, and Paul George. So that like tends to just break my brain and how I think about this because I think the Mavericks would have beaten the Nuggets last year. I think they would have like annihilated the Nuggets with with the injury issues because Jamal uh, or um, uh, their 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 injury issues were just really rough. Despite Aaron Gordon being pretty good, um, I think real playoff things they actually would have beaten the Blazers, even though the Blazers have, are kind of an Achilles heel. Um, the Lakers are a tough tough out for me. Um, they play really good defense and have LeBron James, so that's going. The Suns are another team I'm terrified of. Uh, they have had the Mavericks number for like six years now, and we just don't really talk about it enough. So I think it would, uh, uh, you know, to, and that's just, just going through some of the playoff teams there because it's it's really, you know, right. There's just a, a jumble of teams that were better than the others. And then, you know, the five, six, seven all have the same record. Um, I would say that they would be conference finalist contenders. So that means to me top four to six. Um, I felt this year, even though the Mavericks were the five seed, they, you know, I don't know with, with how they played, particularly just like you mentioned, the injury to KP and the concrete feet. I just have a hard time seeing it this last year, but I'm choosing until I'm proven otherwise, which will probably be like, like three minutes into game one. uh, I'm choosing to be very positive about where, you know, KP's health and otherwise for now. And so I just, I I understand what you mean. I, I, I could see it, but. I just, to me, it almost feels like the Mavericks at this point are trying to like make it through the Chris Tapps Porzingis era, era without coming out unscathed, which is difficult to do because it means they wait, they, they aren't using R- Luca's rookie contract the way like the Chiefs use Patrick Mahomes and stuff like that. <sighs> I don't know. I just, I, it's so much of the West, really the league, is so like injury dependent. Like that was what was very evident to me this last year that the 2011 Mavericks, you know, after losing Cron Butler, they we weren't they didn't really have another serious injury. Like, it, was, it was why they were health, you know, it was, it was incredible to watch like just how much of this stuff is health dependent. So I don't know. Is that's probably not a good enough answer, but does it make sense? Yeah, yeah. I mean I completely get it. And I think, you know, part of part of my desire for something like that was the fact that there is these lingering injuries in the conference with, you know, Jamal Murray and uh, why am I? Oh, Kawhi, obviously. Right. Uh, but, you know, I, I just feel it even beyond that, like if it didn't work out and, you know, that kind of thing, Larry Nance is like 28 or something. And I think ultimately in a couple of years, 
he could still probably fetch a first round pick if for whatever reason it didn't work out and we just keep being a second round out. Like I think he's he's that kind of winning player that contenders will kind of always want, similar to I I think, you know, for someone later in his career like Thad Young. But sure. you know, that that did answer it. I appreciate the feedback and uh thanks as always for having me. Sure thing, buddy. Appreciate you coming on. Good. Welcome to the Central Time Zone with the rest of us. Okay, last question, and then I'm going to have to go. Um, got the uh, the flag from the coaching staff that I need to get out of here quickly. But Sean, what's going on? You know, not much. So my question is uh, kind of team building related. How much weight do you think Cuban gives to the fact that they built the 2011 title team pretty quickly? <sighs> So what do you mean how much like like how much does it do you think he like are you asking if I think he 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 like thinks in one year increments? <laughs> Cuz sometimes that's what I feel like. I mean kind of cuz you know they traded for Kidd in 2008 then they traded for Karan Butler, Deshaun uh Stevenson and Brennan Haywood in the 2009-2010 t- season mm-hmm. and they won the title the next year. Right. By falling so, into Tyson Chandler. Yes. Like uh, Brandon Haywood was a good, was a big enough player and a good enough guy to be willing to come off the bench after they had signed him to starter money. Like it was, yeah. Uh, Kenny yeah. just noted if if Tyson doesn't fail that that physical in Oklahoma City, you know, it's 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 just wild. Um, right. I, I think that I think this is the problem with him being involved as the owner is that I don't think he is an architect for this stuff. Um, he values his own opinion highly and I understand why it's made him a billionaire but I also think that he gets I think he gets worked within the markets of of NBA you know trades and stuff I think that over the years we've watched the Mavericks get used as leverage they're not the only team that that happens to but as much as 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 much as I like appreciate the big picture value of Mark I think that his his over involvement in things is what continually costs the Mavericks stuff. Now, as I've been told a lot, I get this like this year and the previous two years, they're kind of hamstrung by the fact that they, they were leveraged with the, the KP decision was what, you know, that was their big power move. And and I've had to come to grips with that, et cetera, but it, it, it still is the, you know, I, I just, part of me wonders if he, I think his whole strategy right now is they either get an all-star level player, or they're not going to spend the money. And at this point, that's why I, I don't know. Hearing Tim Kato say maybe last week that the Mavericks are operating like they're going to get Goran and then Luca and Goran taking photos and the agency, like one of the guys who runs the agency that, that Bill Duffy is a part of is like liking all the tweets. Like there's just, I don't know. It just feels like this is going a certain way. And if that solidifies, it changes my outlook on the team because I really think that this team goes as far as Luca is willing to take or is able to take them. And, you know, until like, he's a, he's a top five player, top three player, whatever you want to call him. And he has no definition in his arms, smokes hookah like he's a professional and can still go out and give you 30. It, 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 it's just, it's kind of wild to me. So it's like I, I, him thinking about this in terms of one, you know, in short increments where he's just like, well, we can build this rather quickly. I, I'm kind of wondering, like the Mavericks long-term planning has never really gotten them anywhere. So I, I get both sides of it, if that makes any sense. Yeah. You know, my thought process was it kind of makes sense if they're looking at it from that way to just run it back every year. And so that way, if, you know, if something does come along, like the KP thing kind of came along, that that was, that was more New York than anything else. But if they keep it long and keep this team together long enough, maybe something come, you know, pops up. But that also, it kind of makes it seem like they valued, they, they think their guys are very valuable. Yeah, I mean, but it, it feels like very like Boston Celtics of like three or four years ago, where it's like, ah, we value our guys so much, we're never going to trade any of them. But maybe just the deals haven't arisen. Who knows? I mean, that we we have to give the new front office um, a little bit of time to work things past Mark Cuban, and and that's why the draft this year, like I, you know, we all wanted something to happen in the draft, but I mean, they were still they're still figuring this out, and it's gonna it's gonna take it, it's gonna take them a while. Um, I mean, but yeah, I that's all I got. 
I mean, the things we wanted them to do in the draft were buy like a the fifty fourth pick right. or something like that. Right. And so, one last question because I I don't really think or do you have to go? No, no, go ahead. It's fine. Okay. I don't think you've answered or talked about this on the pod. Uh, the profit X or the profit X, however you want to. Oh yeah, that thing. <laughs> yeah. What's like, the question other than the fact that it's a flaming joke and we should not take any stock in anything that came out of that guy's mouth? Yes. The, well, a lot of the things he said kind of raised a bunch of red flags. But I, I don't. I'm not disparaging his work and what he's saying, even though it just sounded like that. I just believe that no, no compet like Mark Cuban of all people is not going to let a competitive advantage advertise that they're working with the Mavericks. And I know from talking with people that that particular company pitched to all 30 NBA teams. The Mavericks were the only one that said yes. And to me, it's another one of these deals where it's like, all right, the Mavericks have, you know, the official chair of the Dallas Mavericks, the official hairdresser of the Dallas Mavericks. Like we see that shit everywhere. Um, I do now hear that I'm in Dallas. It cracks me up. I mean, it's, it's, it's making another buck, so I'm not going to take it away from them. But it's just that that was an odd thing. And I understand where it's um, – I can't remember. The, the the guy who did the interview, he's like he – was, he's been talking on Twitter about how, you know, machine learning, all this stuff is the future. And it's like, I agree with him. I'm just saying, like, when it comes to Dallas, it's not a great look for this guy for everything to be advertising. Look, we got a player that was worth this, and we only paid him this small amount. Like, it's not – it's not good. That is, that's advertising being cheap. <laughs> but like, I, don't, I don't know it just that whole thing just frustrates me but then again I'm the kind of fan who I pile legitimate frustrations and then get grumpy about things that are stupid <laughs> so I don't know that's kind of being a fan yeah yeah so I mean my question was kind of what do the Mavs get out of this I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't really understand what they're in, what they're receiving I mean, some cool graphics on Twitter. I, they can't be a, they can't be getting anything that's of like actual value in their day to day work because that the propri, proprietary team all teams have proprietary stat models. I mean, I don't know if uh, I, I got sent a job just because I do some data analytics work for a living, but like the Mavericks were looking for like a, a back end person to do like a lot of their data science stuff. Um, yeah, like, those people don't get to act, like they don't get to go and talk to the media like they, it's just that's what makes me think it's just it's not that kind of stuff to help them within the game to game issues you know what I mean yeah even though that that guy was very much saying it was that was what they were wanting to do I just I mean it, you know what's the um, like the Ron Burgundy I don't believe you clip like I mean good for him he gets to advertise his business but past that it's just a, and you know what what I think doesn't matter. It's 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 what these guys think. It's just I don't know. It's just one more thing where it's like, why are we talking? Like you know that we're even talking about it is kind of the issue because if it's a real competitive advantage, we're not going to hear about it until after the fact. Right. Or we well we shouldn't really hear about it at all. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, Sean. That was a good question. Um, I don't know. Free New Orleans Noel. It's the only thing I can really think of at the moment. Um, I, I got to get on out of here, but you got anything else? Unfold. No, I, I, but I can't wait to see the New Orleans Noel thing unfold. That's, Man, that's wild. That's wild. All right. You have a good night, John. You too. Okay. So I uh, just so for scheduling purposes, if anybody's made it this far into the podcast, I am interviewing Rob Mahoney uh, of the ringer. We're going to talk a little basketball a little Dallas, uh, and then I'm going to probably pepper him with random questions about Marvel and stuff like that because uh, Rob is a renaissance man, also my very first boss on the internet. Great guy. Uh, That post will be coming out Friday. I may put together something else for, uh, you know, like like Memorial Day, or not Memorial Day, Labor Day, heading into Tuesday. But, uh, you know, it's the time of year where there's just nothing happening. We managed to talk for 35 minutes about nothing. So great job, guys. I appreciate the questions. Appreciate the support. Uh, we'll talk to you guys in a few days and have a good night. Today's episode is brought to you by Cars.com. With over 2 million vehicles and 50,000 more added every day, Cars.com will match you with the perfect car for you, your budget, your life, your style. 
And if you're ready to say goodbye to your current car, Cars.com will get you an instant offer to cash it in. Just start by entering your license plate and get matched with a local dealer who will write you the check. So whether you're looking to buy or sell, just go to Cars.com. It's magical.